All right, welcome to another expert interview. Really excited for today's guest, Karen. As usual, please go below this video, comment, like, and subscribe to the channel. Videos are going up all the time. Uh, I think we have three expert interviews this week and six next week. So lots of great content coming out. And as always, let's jump straight into it. Karen, why don't you uh, introduce yourself and tell us what you do? All right. Good morning, Devin. So I'm Karen Jensen, and I am the owner and founder of the Human Resource Connection, otherwise known as HRC, because the Human Resource Connection <laughs> is too long. So HRC. Uh, and uh, we do um, full service human resource outsourcing. Uh, including leadership training and guidebooks and really the nuts and bolts of HR and you know obviously employee relations guidance and that sort of thing and we've been in business 17 years and there's four of us and that's it love it well thank you for making time I know you had a, a cram day yesterday as you were driving to SAC to, to do a keynote presentation and you made time for us today so thank you I appreciate it Let's talk about trends. I always like to hear what's trending in your space. And I know when it comes to HR, I think the whole industry is trending right now. So what are some hot topics? So, you know, and some of the, these are all really obvious, obviously uh, bodies, humans, getting people, you know, to, to work. And I, I was thinking it would get better when the unemployment was taken away. And that was my, you know, my hypothesis and it really hasn't improved and, you know, just this morning, one of my clients uh, sent me an article. I haven't had a chance to read it because I've been in meetings all morning, like I told you. But, you know, econ it said the title of it was Economists Are Puzzled Why We Have Such a Lack of People. And uh, like I said, I thought it was I thought it was unemployment. And, and maybe it's too soon. Maybe people are still, you know, coming off their unemployment because it only ended in September. So I don't know. That's one of them. And then the other thing is remote working. And, and there's this. There's almost this entitlement feeling now uh, that, you know, I don't have to go into the office. And I think I think it's really a good trend to consider remote working. Some people do better. Some people don't. And so it's 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 a really tough spot for employers and it's really tough to navigate who gets to do it and who doesn't. Those are yeah, those are two very important conversations. Let's dig into into both. So let's start with finding employees. Are there any tricks left in the book that are working? If not, what are some recommendations for business owners? So there are no tricks. <laughs> I'm asked all the time, if I had a trick, I would be doing something different or I'd just be doing that and I'd be a millionaire and <laughs> sipping a cocktail on the beaches of Hawaii. There is it's no so trick. <laughs> but here's my answer to everyone that asked me that. You need to retain the people you have. And the other issue is, is you might need to change the the way you do business, you know, in other words, there might be services you can't offer or I mean, it, it's time to look at procedures and and how you get things done so you can be that much more efficient. So the answer to recruiting is retention. I love it. Well, it's critical, right? And, you know, I mean, I, I have one meeting I was in yesterday, right? They had three people put in notice last week and they put in notice for better pay. So it's, you know, it's interesting, right? Like what's your culture, what's your benefits, what's, what's your structure? So any tips on retention? What, what are some oh, yeah. key things people should be doing? Yeah, I, I could talk about this forever and ever. So one of the things is, is they, you know, right now, it used to be that money wasn't uh, an issue why people left. But now, you know, if, if you used to get, you know, $15 an hour and you can go down the street to the same job for 25, I mean, it's just the inflation is just killing employers. And so, Normally I say it isn't money and if you ask them, you know, really isn't. But when you're getting five dollars an hour more that, you know, it is money in, in some cases. But I would be very leery if I was an employer, I'd, I'd do exit interviews, have a, someone in your company or an outside source. We do exit interviews and really find out what the reason is, because most of the time sans this COVID world. It isn't money. They tell you, the manager, that it's money. And then they come to us in, in HR and they say, my direct supervisor was a jerk, didn't tell me what I was supposed to do, didn't give me training, wasn't good to me. So my main tip on, on retention is praise. We are taught to go out and find what people are doing wrong. Make sure people aren't making mistakes. But what people really need is for you to come out there and say, hey, small or big, it doesn't even matter. This when you did this, the impact was this and thank you. It's not enough to say thank you. Thank you for what? I showed up. I brought you coffee. I'm smiling today. 
right? It is a matter of being specific about your praise and doing it often and often and often. And the other thing is communication is so key right now, transparency. If you don't know what you're doing about COVID and vaccines, and if you don't know, you know, if you're going to find somebody to fill a position, you know, you need to tell your people everything you can tell them. One of their top needs, the number one need is recognition. Their second need is a feeling of being in on things. And if you have transparency, that helps you with retention because they feel like, yeah, I know what's going on. And there's trust. So should we just drop the mic and end it there? <laughs> I mean, but I mean, it's so true, right? Like, I, I love the exit interview feedback because I think that is a missed opportunity, right? And, and I love that you recommend an outside source or if you have an internal HR department, like having someone not the manager, not the owner have that conversation is yeah. where you get that transparency. I love recognition. That's great. You know, let's find the successes because it's really easy to pick up the failures and we don't want to beat our people up, especially right now. No. Uh, and then communication, that's critical. And, and I want to transition that communication to the remote work. So as we look at the remote working world, how do we have communication and recognition and company culture in a remote environment? What, what are some tips to going remote or being remote? So I'm going to back up real quick because I want to say one more thing about exit interviews. The really uh, hot topic trend right now is stay interviews. Mm -hmm. And I think they're really important right now because you go to your current people that are there and you say, why do you stay here? What makes you stay here? And what would make you leave? What, you know, what, what could entice you to leave? So that way you catch them before they leave. So that, that's just a, a thought or that you could call them an engagement interview. Love it. You know? Yes. Great tip and, and, and critical. Yes. Critical right now, because you got, if you want to keep the people you have, you want to know why they're staying. So you keep doing that and what would cause them to leave. So you don't do that. Love it. Great tip. And so as far as remote working, so I, I have always, me personally, have always had remote workers. Uh, I had a gal working for me that lived here and got, her husband got transferred to London. So she worked for me for three years from London. And the key for that, and I have another remote worker right now in Elko, but the key for it is even more communication, it's constant. Like you need to, you know, just cause they're out of sight, they can't be out of mind. You know, you should be having a morning huddle, an afternoon huddle and an end of the day huddle with your people, depending on how big you are, obviously. And so it is constant. And the other thing is, is that you should have some sort of way of tracking what's going on, what they're doing, because you don't really know. And not because you're not because you're don't believe them, but because that way you can say, oh, no, we, we're not. That's not what we should be working on right now. We need to be working on this so you can control the priorities. If you have people do sort of a daily log of what they did, uh, because you don't have the drop by and see Devin and have a conversation. Right. So at least a meeting in the morning and a close out in the day, in the end of the day. And every day, this is what I was working on because that keeps those folks accountable. You know, I, I personally do a lot of work and I have a beautiful home office and so I can squeeze more in, I'll, I'll do zooms and then go in and then go to a client, but it's easy to get distracted if you're not, you know, trained to go to work in your office. And, you know, you're playing with the dog and, you know, on the <laughs> company dime. Well, I love, yeah, I mean, I love the meeting conversation in the huddles. Let's go ahead and ask a side question on that. So just meeting frequency in general, like what, what are your recommendations on meeting flow with employees, like, or team members? What, what's the frequency? Like, it, do you have a, a normalized game plan? Is it custom to every company? Well, I think it's custom to every company, but I, but I will tell you that I'm a huge advocate. Like I don't, again, I don't think you can talk to people enough, especially in today's environment. Yesterday when I was speaking, I told the folks, I said, communicate, communicate, then communicate, then communicate, then communicate some more because people just fill in the void with their own things that are in their head and they're mostly not accurate. And so at least a weekly meeting with your team. And have an agenda, 
you know don't just free flow and tell people that you're you know do guidelines you know if you have a uh, if you have a uh, deliverable you need to come with it we need people to be on time we will end on time if you're on zoom you need to have your camera on and your and your audio on and as far as deliverables so what I like to do suggest people do is if they have a weekly huddle they do this agenda one or two days before the agenda they send out the agenda for the next week and they say what the deliverables are because lots of times people haven't done those deliverables but if you do it two days ahead then boom they're like oh my gosh and then you have a more productive meeting i love i love the i mean any meeting in general that's a good tip right i sit on a few boards and i know that if it's a same day agenda i probably not going to come to the meeting with whatever i owed you because i probably forgot right yeah but if you give yeah. it to me three four days ahead of time or like the yeah. friday before it gives yeah. me time to like you know what yeah i did send 19 emails let me follow up on those right so mm -hmm. i like that idea of you know a couple mm -hmm. days out that that's a really good takeaway mm -hmm. what about yeah what about the dog and kids and all that stuff? So you talked about, you know, there might be some inefficiencies or distractions at home. So if you're that at home worker, what are some tips you have for that person to kind of become, you know, the office environment? So it, it's all about creating a private space where you are able to shut your door and, and, and control the kids and control the dogs and control the people knocking on the door, whatever it is. You need to set yourself up as if you are in your regular office and you need to tell whoever's in your home, I'm going to work. I told you that uh, one of you know, my youngest is homesick right now and I tell her, but she's been doing this since she was two. <laughs> <laughs> I have a funny story. I have to share it. Yeah. But anyways, so she knows if I say I'm on a podcast or I'm in a meeting, that door will not open unless I said bring this to me or whatever. So I have a funny story when she was little, I had uh, I was I was on an unemployment I was in an unemployment hearing on the phone. And I always told my kids do when they were little, do not knock on the door unless the um, house is burning down. So I hear this and I'm like, oh my god. She was probably 5. So then she keeps knocking. And so then I said, you know, she says, mommy, mommy, it's an emergency. Okay, she's five. So I'm like, I'm sure it's an emergency, you know. And so then she goes, mom, mom, the neighbor's house is on fire. <laughs> You're like, no, 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 really? <laughs> it really was. I looked out the window. I was like, oh, my gosh, I have to, I have to put you on hold. I got to call the fire department for reals. <laughs> That's too good. She's like, look, mom, I'm following directions. Yep. So anyway, I'm sorry. That was a little tangent, but a little humor. No, it's great though. I mean, that is the dynamics of, you know, having kids and pets and stuff at home is like, there are going to be those interruptions. And I think you got to learn to flow with them too, because yeah. I know my daughter, like there's just times where like, you know what, she hasn't slept or she's woke up from her nap. And it's like, look, the reality is she's going to sit on my lap for the next 20 minutes and we're going to have a meeting. So like, welcome to the game, right? Yeah. You know what I love about, I, I will say this, that it has brought joy to people. I watch people, you know, in meetings and their dog comes running in and everyone's like, let me see the dog. I mean, in, in COVID, it was, it was such a, a welcome, you know, just, it made people more, it makes people more human. Well, it's a glimpse into their life, right? Like yeah. this is just, you're in the office, you're having a conversation. Yeah. And I always tell people I love personal wins when I do like team meetings and team huddles because I like to hear what's going on in your personal life because we don't get that glimpse. Like unless we're having that, that coffee talk around the cooler, like yeah. I love to hear like my softball team won a game or my kid was student of the week or like what was that win this week so we can all celebrate and learn a little bit yeah. about you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So true. I, I, um, I was on the, I'm on the NNHRA board and the, I was president in 2017 and the president before me started every meeting with, actually, I can't remember if it was her that started or me. It was probably me, but it doesn't matter. What happened is every single meeting, we do something personal. There's 20 of us. It takes 20 minutes, but I'll tell you what, we've had the same core board now for six, seven years. That never used to be the case because we know each other because people like to do business with people who they know, like, and trust.
That's an Alice Hyman quote. But so true. Yeah. So anyway, we're getting off topic, probably. No, it's good. It's good. That that's the joy of these conversations. Is they're real and they're valuable. Let's talk about outsourcing. So I know businesses have so many options when it comes to do I handle HR myself? Do I outsource? And then if they go to the outsourcing world, there's so many options. What is your insight to in, in kind of reasoning for why should they look at having an outsource partner? Well, I don't think it's the right answer for everyone. I'll say that right off the bat. Size matters as far as amount of employees you have. If you're a smaller company and you don't, and, and when I say smaller, I'm saying like 50 and under, maybe 75 and under. It's hard to afford a certified, experienced HR person. And, you know, you need that. And yet, they that might not be a full-time job. So there's this sweet spot where these companies are like, what do I do? And, you know, my, my plug for outsourcing, especially my company, is that you're, you're in reality going to spend less money in a year with us doing your in-house HR and I'm talking in-house, not just, you know, where we do everything, because that's one of the things we offer. You're going to spend less money than you are hiring somebody, and we're way more efficient because we're not we're not there, you know, getting caught up in, because you just get caught up in HR because people want to catch you up. And as HR people, we, you know, we feel like, okay, we got to touch you, but we're mostly remote. Then we're more on site, then we're talking, and, you know, it, it's easier to control the 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 distractions that maybe aren't that are taking us away from the important things. And the other thing is, is that at least in our case, you're getting a six figure level person doing your HR for less than you would, you know, five year, eight, 10 year HR person. So, and, and so there's that. And the other thing is, is let's say maybe you don't want to outsource it, but you have holes we are able to then partner with your HR people and fill those holes. You don't have a guidebook. They said they were going to update the guidebook five years ago, but they can't get to it. I get it why they can't get to it. It is, it is heck on earth right now to be in HR. And so, you know, then we partner with those HR people and we get these projects done that A, they don't want to do, and, and B, they don't have time to do it. So there's my plug. I love it. Well, and I love I love the reference and I use it a lot when referring HR companies is like, look, they're experts and they've been doing it forever and yeah. you can't afford to hire them, right? For most, again, to your point, most of the yeah. businesses under a certain level, like it's not in the budget, yeah. but you need it to be in the budget because the negative impact of bad HR can cost you a lot of money. <laughs> oh, you, might, you know what my phrase is? Pay now, pay later and pay more later. That's it. Yeah. it it's yeah. so true, right? It's the, I use that analogy with CPAs too. Like you don't have a CPA for your business. That's fantastic. You're going to pay for it later. <laughs> <laughs> like I would just, you are right. Same with a good lawyer. Like if you don't have your contract styled in and your stuff, like, guess what? It's fine. But at yeah. some point you're going to pay for it. <laughs> yeah. Until it's not. It's fine until it's not. Mm -hmm. Love it. So we're kind of, we've, we've kind of hit all our talking points. Is there anything else, anything you're working with clients on right now that you think is relevant, worth sharing that you think people need to know about? Yeah. And, and, you know, it's really more prevalent right now and I'm not sure why, but our clients are calling us and they're saying, you know, I have this problem employee and they, you know, it's been six months and, you know, they don't show up and they have their attitudes terrible. And, and I asked them, and this probably happens twice a day. I'm not kidding you. Have you talked to them? No, not yet. It's so basic, you know, so, so my new phrase, and yesterday this was like a hit, it's just a conversation. Have a conversation. We're, I think it's because we're worried about losing the people. We don't want them to quit. But no, people want structure. People want fairness, consistency, and structure. Just like kids, they want rules. They want to know what's expected of them. And if they're going off track, most people want to know that it's okay. It's just a conversation. That's such good advice. And I love that. I mean, people don't like conflict, right? In general, 
they want to avoid it, but avoiding it can create worse because you kind of, you said the statement earlier, right? They're then telling themselves a story that is probably not accurate. And you're telling yourself a story about the situation that definitely isn't accurate. Mm -hmm. So just go have the conversation. I love that. I think communication has been brought up multiple times. So if there's any takeaway today, that's definitely one of them is communicate yeah. often, communicate frequently, have communication, talk to your team um, because they probably need it. And, and, and I, sorry, I have a million things to say. Do it, do listening, it, yeah. listening is the other issue is that everyone, everyone says, Oh, I have an open door. And I'm like, it's not an open door. It's an open door. <laughs> It means that it means that you are open. It means that you're not that when they come to talk to you, you don't tell them they're wrong. And, you know, you're you're listening to understand. You're not listening to disagree. You're listening to go, OK, let me understand what it is you need or why you did it wrong or what isn't working for you versus they talk. And then you go, this is why you're wrong. And da -da 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 -da. that's listening to disagree. And people need to feel heard, I think, especially in today's day and time. And that'll help you with the conversation. That's awesome. Let's ask the hard question. So uh, mask mandates, vaccines, uh, I know it's all over the place. What's your, what's your talking points there? <laughs> really, Devin? <laughs> I, ha I, gotta, I gotta ask you. I, gotta I try you. not to talk about this, you know, <laughs> but I, you ask me, I'm gonna tell you. I think that the vaccine mandate I'm going to tone my words down. I think we are crossing a line. And it is causing incredible division. And I worry for employers. And it's not going to be affordable. It's not as far as the folks that don't want to get the vaccine. Then you have to weekly test them. The tests are super expensive and it's going to it's going to impact our economy even more than covid already has and so that is my thought on that and as far as masks go <clears throat> i don't think it's been proven they help i i because i go but i watch this from the beginning because it affects my employers right so first they said masks aren't going to help. Yes, masks will help, but only for you not spreading it. Oh, wait, no masks will help, but for both of us. Oh, wait, we don't really have to have masks. I mean, right? Unless we're wearing N95 masks, and that I'm no, I am no medical person, and I know people listening to this right now. Listen, just listen to understand. You don't have to agree with me. <laughs> you don't even have to listen to understand. But from an employer perspective, it's not sustainable. It's not affordable as far as the people that don't want to get vaccinated and mandating that they do. I mean, I mean, you know, look at the Chicago fire, police department, fire department. They need their police and fire and they don't want to, the people don't want to do it. Right. And they're already short staffed. So I just don't think we can put these kind of restrictions on employers that we already have so much going on. I, I love your insight there. And I think that the, the key takeaway here is this is a critical time to have a partner. This is not a time as a business owner to make it the wild, wild west and hope to God you end up in a right decision because there's probably not a right decision right now, but you need to understand what you're dealing with. You need to know here's the possible consequences, this direction and this direction and have a professional who can really outline that for you Mm -hmm. When it comes to, you know, the, I mean, exemptions are a nightmare when it comes, I mean, there's just so many pieces so here. Bad. You need to navigate with real dialogue. And then those conversations you're going to be stuck in having with employees are not going to be comfortable. So no. having, again, no. a partner that can guide you in either mm -hmm. some talking points, things to avoid, like the, the big takeaway I want people to understand it. And I think your answer said it is like, just be careful and you need help. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean, because I, it, I, I, it, I have no words. Like, listen, I can't even get them out. Right. And I'm not normally speechless, but the exemptions, you mentioned that the lawsuits that are going to occur. And they're already occurring, but they are just going to ramp up. Yeah, I mean, we're going to unpack it for a while. So, all right, that's enough of that. I just had to yeah. ask. I wanted to see you. That's all right. Play. So I always like to, you know, you've been on a journey. You've had a great business. You're doing great things in the community. 
I always like the question, if you were advising your younger self, yeah. what's something you would say or what's something you would do different or what, what's a takeaway there? So I, so I have two. One is uh, I did not invest in my company monetarily in the beginning. Like I didn't get any capital. I literally started it with tape and spit. And, and so the road has been long. Whereas if I had had some money up front, that would have been helpful to get, you know, the websites and the, 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 the brochures and, you know, all of that kind of thing. The second thing is, and, and, and I think this is most important, keep your foot on the gas when it comes to sales, because you know, you're, you have like 10 prospects going and you think, oh my gosh, if they all come through, I'm not going to be able to do this work. Well, there's two things about that. Number one, they're all not going to come through. Right. And number two, if by some miracle they do, you hire another person or you work you know, longer hours till it's mellowed out, but it de- it's typically number one, they don't all come through. And so I used to go, okay, we're, we're slammed. I'm just going to pause out on sales. And then the bottom would drop out and then, and then it'd go like this and the bottom would drop out. And so now, I mean, I'm just on, on it all the time. I love, I, again, I love those two takeaways. I love everyone's insight. I, I think, you know, we're having this conversation a lot as we're ramping up a project, right? Everything takes more time and more money than you think. Always. And so, you know, I think that in business, it is it is really interesting to navigate the funding in the beginning because there's some hurdles, especially depending on your history and credit and whatever. So I think that is a takeaway though, like make sure you're looking for capital. And a great way to do that kind of fits into your second point though is, you can't stop selling, right? Because cash is king. You've got to have revenue. And I always use the teeter totter analogy, right? So you're either selling or producing and so many entrepreneurs end up selling and then producing, but while they're producing, they're not selling. And then they wake up and go revenues down. It's like, well, you don't have a pipeline. You haven't been nurturing. You haven't been putting people through, or you're trying to quick close people on your timeline, which people don't buy on your timeline. They buy on their timeline. So let's make sure that we have a big enough funnel so that people can say yes when it's good for them. So I, such good, valuable insight. Love that. Well, I learned that. I just learned that the hard way, you know, I, I, you know, and I had to tell my team, listen, I'm going to keep selling and I know you're going to freak out. And they, you know, they're looking at me like, what if they all come in? And I remind them, they're all not going to come in and we just got to keep our foot on the gas. So, and it's easy as an entrepreneur, Devin, to get sidetracked and to get, you know, you know, they always say you can't work in the business. You have to work on it. You just can't lose sight of that when you're the business owner. Such good advice. Absolutely. So last question, uh, book recommendations or podcast recommendations, something that you find value in. So there's this TED talk on procrastination. It's called Inside the Mind of a Master Procrastinator. Have you seen it? I have. It's so good. So anyway, I don't know. It, that's my favorite uh, podcast, to be honest with you. I just, oh, I love that. And then also, um, we have this book called Communicating with Confidence uh, and, you know, speaking of, on the topic of communication and this lady, Diana Booher, she writes this whole book on tips on, on specific ways. Like there's this one chapter called Criticize Without Crippling and it's all of these tips on how to say something to an employee, you know, when, when it's not, when it's uncomfortable, but she has tips on all different areas of communication. So, you know, how to negotiate, you know, it's so, I love that book. Great. Awesome takeaways. Any other comments, things you want to say before we wrap up? No, I don't think so. I think that was good. I appreciated you having me. Awesome. Well, as always, guys, below the video will be links to connect with Karen, learn about her company, learn about her. Please like and subscribe, comment, share some love. If you have additional questions, let us know. HR is a hot topic. Uh, we can hit record and do this again and plow through your <laughs> conversations. So Karen, thanks so much. I know you're busy and I appreciate you driving value and having this conversation. Thanks, Devin.